Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about making 2D assets for video games. And primarily today we're going to focus on repeatable tile sets. So a tile set is essentially a kind of a game pack of different items that you can use and reuse to create a game world. So I want you to kind of look at all these images here. I've gone ahead and Googled side scroller tile set for you because that's what I want you to create today after you learn a few of the techniques that I teach you in this lesson. Now you're welcome to expand off of those te techniques on your own. I'm just giving you kind of the basic setup for that. Uh, you'll see a lot of these side scrolling elements in a lot of mobile games and a lot of older side scrollers, one of the most famous being the Mario levels uh, and games. So go ahead and kind of take a look online, do your research, look up some uh, some different kind of items here, uh, and hopefully you're inspired to create your very own world because you can see just with a few simple changes we can kind of change up some of these elements. So where do we get started? Well, we have a few different ways to approach tile sets. One, we can just kind of do some more painterly type moves, which I can talk to you a little bit about. And then the other is to deal with pixel art, which we'll get into a bit later in the lesson. So let's go ahead and open our Photoshop. And let's just start in Photoshop with a simple kind of tutorial on how to do this. Now, a lot of a successful tile set depends on the understanding of seamless textures. So in our seamless texture lesson, we learned to create a square texture that can be repeated or tiled over multiple instances and kind of seamlessly fold together. So for us, we're going to start a new Photoshop file and we're going to go ahead and open it up and we're going to go and we could add a lot of different numbers here, but we're going to start with a few um, settings. So we're going to make sure we're set on pixels and realistically here you could do eight by eight 16 by 16 and when I start going through these numbers I want you to realize that these kind of correlate to the different gaming systems that you've seen so if I type 64 by 64 for my square and pixels you're kind of thinking a little bit of the Nintendo 64 so we're gonna go a little higher up on the first one because we're gonna do it a little more painterly and we're gonna type 256 by 256 and we're gonna just start in a cube to create our first tileable asset and here we are, we have our tileable asset. You can see that as I zoom in, I have my grid lines on. We'll talk about that a little bit later. If you do not have your grid lines, do not fret. Uh, you can simply go up and say view or view, show, and grid. And you can turn those off as well. So again, view, show, grid, and so forth. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping we want to do first is we want to kind of unlock this background layer and I'm going to create a new layer above it and I'm actually going to delete that background layer because I want a fully transparent background. And you'll notice in a lot of the tiles that they typically, uh, especially for ground, kind of are made up of two main factors. You have kind of the top quadrant and then you have the bottom quadrants as well. And to do that we could use all sorts of tools. We could go to the lessons we learned in the shape tool and we could kind of start drawing out shapes up here and editing those shapes. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and simply just use the brush. And the brush tool is a pretty great way to work with tile sets. So I'm gonna start pretty simple. I'm gonna start by activating my brush tool and I'm going to up the size of my brush and make sure the hardness of my brush is to 100% because what I typically like to do to start is just kind of block out where I'm gonna go. So if I'm gonna have some green grass, I'll go ahead and set my color or my foreground color to green and I will go ahead and just kind of block that in. Now I'm not going for details right away, but I'm definitely thinking of proportions and scale and ratios. So I'm making sure this is on the layer and I can even type in that layer if I double click in it top grass. There we go. Now I'm going to add a new layer below it and we'll kind of make that dirt shape. So we're going to change our, our foreground color once more and we'll change it to a kind of maybe a very desaturated ground texture and we'll do our edit fill and we'll make sure we fill with the foreground color. Now that we have that element you can kind of see it's starting to piece together and typically and I want to name that dirt 
base on purpose, typically I you wouldn't be so zoomed in because you'll notice I'm 300% in. Remember, this is 100%. This is what I'm going to see. And also, I have the grid on there as well. So if I were to do the view show grid again and remove that, you notice that it looks pretty basic. So one of the couple uh, things we need to do is kind of refine this a little bit more. So let's go back into grid view. And let me go back to my top green grass. And rather than trying to find that color again, I'm going to hold my Alt key and click and it will actually sample this. Now we've learned this in our line tutorial uh, a, a bit earlier in the semester. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just kind of paint a little bit of, you know, more organic grass and, you know, my grass apparently looks like slime, but I will go with it. So I'm using my bracket keys uh, to kind of taper my line you can change your brush right here. You're not stuck on that default brush at the top. But overall, I want to get a pretty decent kind of grass-esque texture. So doing this, I'm basically lowering my brush using my bracket keys. And I'm making sure that all of my final pieces kind of come together. So this is really where you need to explore. Um, you know, using reference is always a great kind of point, but in the end, it really comes down to your creativity. So once I kind of have that top point, I can kind of expand this more. Let's go ahead and get some kind of shadows going on in here. And one of the quickest ways to do that is actually using something called your layer styles. Now layer styles can be activated a few different ways. They can be activated through layer layer style, I can get my mouse to work here, the mouse is having a little attack there, and we can kind of go into our layer styles up here, add fill layers, add adjustment layers. What I like to do is either double click on my layer, or if I cancel that real quick, go to the FX modes at the bottom. So double clicking is the most efficient way. Yours may look a little different than mine, um, don't, don't fret if that's the case, I think I just have a few extra stroke pattern in there for y'all. So let's go ahead and play with some of these settings. Let's go ahead and add a drop shadow first and foremost. I'll click on the word drop shadow and you'll notice some of these even have plus signs. We'll get to that in a moment. And I'm going to choose a little bit darker of a green than my green that is present. And I will go ahead and kind of drop that down and you know maybe get a little bit of spread and distance in here. Because remember, this is going to be rather small on my screen. I'm kind of zoomed in right now. And really want it to be just kind of popping off the screen. And that's kind of cool. Like now we actually start getting some dimension. Uh, we could go further here. We could kind of play with different types of glows. We can add patterns. We'll actually do that down on the dirt. Uh, we could add a gradient, which would be pretty awesome. So you can see if I do a gradient and I change my blend mode and let's change this to linear. I can actually get a little bit of a gradient pattern on there, which is kind of neat. Not really feeling it though. Uh, we have satin, we have inner glow, which is actually a pretty cool one. And then we have uh, inner shadow as well. So typically I like to kind of go through and I really just turn these on and off. Some look really bad from the get go, so don't, don't really fret there. And then um, some may not show a lot of detail until you really go in and start playing with your settings. So, you know, when you play with these, you may get some great results, you may get some not so great results. It's really just trial and error as we go in. So, I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit with inner shadow. I'm going to change my blending mode to normal, and I'm going to kind of play with the distance here, play with the size. I want to get a little bit of roundness and brightness going on in here. And I'm going to change the color to a brighter color. Maybe set that back to the screen. So really it's just kind of playing around and seeing what results we can get. Go to normal here. Okay, that's a little too much. Let's do a bright... bright bright green 
borderline yellow. Now I'm getting some good yellow. You can see it's starting to come in. Hopefully you all can see that on your own screen. I'll just kind of exaggerate it so you can see. And this really, really helps me kind of get a better base to my final material. And realistically, play with any of these settings. You can go through and hit these buttons, and you may not know what they do, but visually it will most likely show you what they'll do. And so you can kind of have a lot of control and maybe get some unique custom results you weren't expecting. Uh, I'm digging the one I have. I'm fine with this. I don't want to add a stroke on this one, but I could. We'll talk about that a little later, and I'm going to hit OK. And so now what I would typically do is kind of start more layers, and I would say shadow. And you can see that this is actually a pretty involved process. I'm going to sh change my shadow layer to multiply. And I'm going to turn down my opacity quite a bit. And I'm going to actually turn on my Pren Pressure and my Airbrush mode that we learned in the line tutorial. And at this point, I kind of want to start with a darker uh, color. So I'm going to use my color swatch. And for those of you who don't have it set this way, I like to use HSB. And HSB actually gives me a little brightness slider, so I can kind of pull that down. And then I can go in and start, kind of start adding that, that shading in there to just get that custom painterly look. Now this is on a separate layer. It, it is super low opacity. If I screw up, it is not the end of the world. I can always erase it. The eraser tool is just one flip of a pen or click of the E key to erase. And I can kind of go through and kind of get some shadow going. And this kind of breaks up the monotony of that, that custom, or not that custom, but that computer driven kind of feel that we had using the other ones. And I'm gonna just continue to build up and I may turn some of my settings up. I may get a little darker here what I typically like to do is really find that light source and kind of paint on one side to kind of pull in my light source. And remember, this is a little odd too because we're dealing with, and I'm gonna undo that stroke right there. We're dealing with um, basically a really zoomed in piece of work. So you can see my mouse is not working exactly how that it normally would, but if I zoom out, we're starting to get that nice kind of polish to it. And just with shadows, I'll also create a new layer and I'll call it highlights. And I'm gonna set that layer to screen or lighten or any of those blending modes. And I'm gonna kind of do the opposite here. I'm gonna just bump up the saturation and maybe get a bigger brush here because I wanna kind of lay this in and start playing with this. And at this point, feel free to change your hardness of your brush, make it a little softer. Start getting those painterly strokes. Now, for this lesson, you're creating your own, so p feel free to follow along with me, but if you're having struggles with this, you may not wanna make grass. You may wanna make yours stone or concrete. The ultimate goal is to kinda really push your creativity. And we're gonna really push this, this kind of end product here in a second. I'm just laying down base blocking color for time's sake. So here, I'm actually gonna turn this down quite a bit just so I can get a little bit of depth into it. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's hop down to that dirt base, double click on that layer, and let's play with some patterns on that. So what I can actually do, and I'm gonna turn off my grid here real quick so you all can see. I'm going to use a pattern that just was kind of standard in my element. And it's pretty amazing. You can download a lot of these patterns online. This one's kind of like a weird like cellular pattern, kind of a neat looking feel. But look at in a matter of an instant what that did. Look at that. So I can kind of go into the pattern overlay and I can change the scale. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can change the opacity. I can actually, this is the one I probably want to put a gradient overlay on. So we'll set that to black and white, and then we'll kind of adjust those settings. Just move that down a little bit, and we'll make sure that's set to white too. 
So we don't really want a ton of gradient. There we go. Change the scale just slightly. Again, I'm playing with all these settings and you know the ultimate goal is I really just want to get like a, the feeling of kind of like the dirt's getting darker near the end so you know if it starts looking really bad which it does all the time I mean I I'm doing this for the first time in front of you all it's just a matter of kind of testing this area and I'm kind of really liking that I kind of have now this cool start to the tile set now what I can actually do is take all my layers and I actually can flatten my image. And so if I flatten my image now, I get this singular kind of square. And I'm gonna actually delete the little background layer for it. But let's undo that real quick. Let me show you a cool little trick. I don't wanna get rid of any of my work. So I'm gonna actually put this all in a folder. And then I'm going to hit Command or Control, op Option, Shift, and the E key. And what that does is actually flattens those layers, but it keeps all the other ones below it. So I can kind of just eyeball them off. And so now what I would probably want to do is maybe put a little bevel and emboss on this and see if I can't get kind of a nice overall bevel to my piece. So, you know, now it really comes down to, like I said before, just kind of testing and, oh, here we go. We're getting somewhere. Testing the... Uh, the place trying to get some dimensionality in it playing with the colors we may choose to use like a green because it's more nature like instead of a straight white don't be afraid to change these colors y'all these are these are really good things and this takes practice you can find tons of tutorials online but I just kind of wanted to give you the the kind of kind of the rough and the short of it a little bit Maybe I'll change that to chisel. And we'll put the opacity up a little higher. That a little higher. You can see my settings. You can always pause the video. And now I have a tile set. Check that out. So it's not really a tile set, but what would happen is if I had a new scene, and let's go ahead and I'm gonna just go to the new scene here. And I'm going to, let's do a print and let's do a standard letter nothing big just opening a new photoshop scene and if i went and copied this layer and pasted it actually i want to drag and drop it so let's do that let's take that whole layer and i lost it it's back here let's put this back on photoshop's great because you can just drag and drop with your mouse I'm going to drag it into this layer and let go. There we go. Now I could actually scale this down and I can go to edit free transform or command T or control T and start making my level. I can copy and paste these. I can actually use my move tool and hold the option key or alt key down and kind of continue to kind of make those tile with one another. So you can see, turn the background off here. I'm actually starting to make some progress here. And I got more work to do on these, but this just gives you a good idea of kind of how those elements are made. Now, oftentimes when I talk about 2D games, I hear a lot about, and I'm gonna just save this real quick, save as. I'll save the Photoshop file for you all so you can kind of look at it and look at my mess that I made. So we'll call it tile painted and we'll put this on the desktop and I'll put this in the uh, course files for you but what a lot of people typically do is they go straight to pixel art now pixel art is pretty amazing if those of you who know what good pixel art looks like it can be actually rather well done and there are some amazing pixel artists out there doing some really really innovative and cool things um, you know, it, it, it can be super detailed. One of the misconceptions of pixel art, if I can get my computer to work here, is that pixel art is a quick way of doing art. 
Far from the contrary. Good pixel art takes hours to do. And I'm more than happy if you all go ahead and take this undertaking. Bad pixel art ends up looking like this. There's a big difference. You can kind of see the difference between good and ugly between these. And I really want you all to take this in because I get a lot of students who who kind of rush through these processes and kind of forget what the good stylized pixel art really can look like. So there's a really a lot of uh, amazing things out there. You just need to do your homework. So let me teach you a little bit about how to do that. Now, there's a couple of online tools I'm gonna introduce you in a second that do, do pixel art, but let's set up our Photoshop to do pixel art. So we have this file, we're gonna close this down, and we're gonna actually learn how to do it straight into Photoshop. So the first thing you need to do is make some changes to Photoshop to help you. So I want you to locate your preferences. If you're on a Mac, they'll be under the Photoshop tab. On a PC, I believe they're over on the other end uh, of your menu, but you're gonna look for preferences you're going to look for guides, grids, and slices, and you're going to go to that. You're going to make sure your grid line is set for every one pixel and with a subdivision of one. So that's very important you set your grid up like this. Also for general, you're going to want to make sure you change your general to nearest neighbor preserve hard edges, and that's next to image interpolation. This is going to make sense in a bit. But what I'm doing is setting up my screen to do pixel art. Now, one of the most important things, if when you start making changes, you want to make sure that you just simply hit reset preferences on quit. And it says, are you sure you want to reset your preferences? Now, why would you want to do this? Let's say you're making pixel art. Let's say the next time you open Photoshop, you don't want to make pixel art catch my drift you want to make sure that that's reset so I'm gonna just hit OK and then save those out and go from there so let's open another new file take a second to open up and we're gonna make a much smaller file now because we're dealing with pixels we're actually gonna do uh, let's do even less let's do like 20 by 20 We'll make a really small file here and everything else can say the same make sure you're 20 by 20 pixels not inches believe it or not I've done the other by accident and there it is, not very eventful. Well, you're gonna need to find your zoom tool and you're gonna need to zoom in. Click, click, click until it fills your screen. You're gonna also want to turn on your grid again. So view, grid, there it is. And for pixel art, we are not going to use our brush. If I hold down my mouse on the brush tool, I actually wanna use my pencil tool. So we're gonna go to the pencil tool activate that and make sure our pencil is set to a size of one pixel and a hardness of 100. So here we go. So I'm going to start just like the last project with a few new layers. I don't really need this background layer, but what happens with this is, and let me hit D to reset my tablet here. When I start painting, you'll see I'm actually painting in pixels. So it's actually rather neat. So you can do a lot of really amazing things with the pixel art tool, or the pencil tool, I should say. I'm actually gonna turn off my smoothing as well. That helps me kind of distribute. So let's go ahead and let's just make like a, a couple simple objects. Let's start by making a background. Let's put a background color in, something like a neutral gray. Edit fill, foreground color, that sounds great. And I will then change my color to a nice yellow. And let's like let's just draw a coin. So we'll go in here and with our square brush. And the first thing to do is to kind of start with a square because we are dealing with pixels. And we want to make, oddly enough, a round square. So that's a little weird. But I'm going to kind of go ahead and make a coin shape like that. Now I could add more or less pixels. I'm just doing this for demo sake. And I would do the same thing when it comes to my shading. I'd actually change the brightness and on a layer called highlights, I'd actually go ahead and put some kind of highlights in there as well. I could also go to my layer two or that original coin layer and I could go ahead and add a stroke. 
And when I do that, it's, it's gonna look like a mess at first until I change some sizes. But one of the first things I wanna do is maybe add maybe a little more rich orange outline. We'll make it on the outside and we'll pull down that quite a bit. So by changing that kind of distribution in the general preferences, you can see kind of it gives me more than one tone, which is actually pretty cool looking when we're really dealing with these things. So we can kind of get a really nice diverse color palette with that and get a lot of different effects as we change. I could have an, even add another stroke on this and change the distribution from inside to outside. I may put another color that's slightly darker to kind of start to get some contrast. And if I hit OK and then hit Z and hold my Alt key and zoom out, you can start to see I'm getting actually some pretty cool contrast. So let's go back in here and let me take some of the strokes off and let's go back to that original sharp image. What happens if we do an outer glow? Well, now we start to get some really amazing things. So I'm gonna actually select the color of this glow and pick my yellow. And when I start playing with this, because I have kind of that setup, check that glow out I get. It's actually a really, really neat technique that you'll find a lot in a lot of different types of games and, and kind of some of the real advanced kind of art as well. So it kind of distributes that color more evenly. And we could do this on all of the layers if we wanted to add a gradient perhaps to that background. Uh, we could do that. We could actually go back and add a standard linear gradient. We could change even and put a different color. And you can start seeing the pixels you're getting. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we don't really need all of these uh, grid lines. We wouldn't see them anyway, so we're going to turn off that grid. But now you can see that you actually get an actual pixeled type paint. So this is actually the starting point of good pixel art. Now, a lot of people don't like doing this in Photoshop. I love it. I love all the different effects you can use with your blending modes, but there are free resources out there that you can just Google. One of them, which is really amazing, is called Piscal or Pixel, and you can actually create sprite character animations. And this is something I'm gonna have you all explore in a later assignment, but we're gonna actually do uh, a few little movements with our pixels. So this is a very free and easy program. You can sign in, that's okay. You wanna make an account, it's free. But I wanna just hit Create Sprite. So if I don't wanna sign in, I just wanna play and explore, I can hit Create Sprite maybe. My internet kicks in. And now I have a pretty diverse program. I have an option to do pen sizes. I have an option to draw a shape and then perhaps get a paint bucket and make some changes and fill that shape in. All of which are creating exportable, basically exportable PNG pixels or game assets that I can go in and play with. And you can see I can do some really quick things without maybe having to set up my stage like I did in Photoshop. Now, I'm not really dealing with the animation side of this yet, but I can add my own colors, I have my own set. Um, I s typically stick to one frame. I can kind of lighten or darken depending on the, the tool I use. So you can kind of see, like I can hold down that button and it will darken. I can do really, really neat things. I can paint a lot of pixels at once. I can actually open up and have a mirror pen so I can paint two sides at once so you can make kind of like asteroid characters this is a really cool program and most importantly it's free it is super free and you can actually take it and do the export at the end and pull it into a photoshop or turn it into an animated gif or a, simply a png that you take into photoshop and use those skills and those layer modes in there so piscal is a very powerful program that i want you all to try too uh, and their keyboard shortcuts you can see are pretty pretty vast again it takes practice to kind of do but you're more than welcome to use this to kind of make that that asset list and I'm gonna give you kind of for your tile set 
I'm going to give you a, uh, and you can see how fast those little kind of mossy kind of parts of the grass could come in on pretty quick. But I'm going to give you uh, all a list of what I'm looking for. So I want, especially I want a ground element. Um, that's going to be really important. And hopefully you all use these different kind of uh, different tools to, to really kind of push your creativity and help use the tool to kind of enhance what you're creating. So whether you're creating pixel art in pixel, pixel art in here in uh, Photoshop, or simply using some hand painted skills to kind of create tileable assets, it's really important that you all kind of harness your creativity and use the tools available to create the best possible item. So hopefully you picked up some techniques to uh, get the basics, the very, very basics of tile set creation and creating repeatable environment pieces using digital tools. I'll catch you in the next lesson and I'm really looking forward to seeing your progress.